Hello my soccer universe, welcome to the review of what happened yesterday in the Europa and the Europa Conference League. This time we will be starting first with the Conference League and then the Europa League because I think um, there were quite some remarkable things happening in both comp competitions but uh, stuff in the Europa League definitely sticks out. But I want to actually start my opening observations in a different way with more opening learnings. What are some lessons that I learned yesterday? Well. First off, never take anything for granted. When I said it last year, uh, last week, I said, well, two ties in the Conference League are more or less done. Well, both of them were at one time going for overtime. One actually did. Very closely related to that. Don't do panic buys. Yes, I bought this Anderlecht shirt. Yes, I bought this Nice shirt. The Nice shirt, uh, I don't regret as much. I don't regret the Anderlecht shirt either because it's, uh, it's very nice. But I mainly bought uh, both, of, uh, both of those because I expected uh, both teams to make it to the semifinals with relatively comfortable positions. No, both of them were out. Fortunately, I have AZ. Fortunately, I have Basel, which was kind of a little bit one. Yeah, it was part of a package deal. Let's get Basel in there as well. Worked out fine for me <laughs> in this case. But yeah, I uh, wouldn't have had to spend these almost 100 euros if I was only going for the conference league again. Nice will be fine. I'm not sure when I will pull that underleg shirt. Fortunately, it's a good look looking one I might wear. It's just uh, like that. And then the last learning is about these guys up there. And thumbnail. Sevilla is Europa League. Sevilla can have a bad season. Sevilla cannot look good in the league. Sevilla can have even at Old Trafford. They look down and out. Everything but. There is an argument to be made that it was kind of a United self-elimination because, you know, I would argue that four of the five goals that United conceded against Sevilla were all self-made and Sevilla didn't have to do much for those. But yeah, uh, it was not a pretty sign. And then uh, the last lesson, but I, I put a quick question mark, is Serie A back among the top? I mean... Not only do we have two Champions League uh, semi-finalists, one of which will be a finalist, we also have two semi-finalists in the Europa League that could meet in the final, and Fiorentina, a Fiorentina team that many have also at least in the final, if not winning it, although they almost were on the brink of elimination yesterday. So uh, that will be interesting, and it's always even more interesting that the top two teams in the league at the moment are not in Europe any, any, anymore. So a uh, kind of the depth of the Italian teams looks really, really good. I will admit, especially true for the five champs, but a little bit there here as well, luck of the draw definitely had also something to do with it. And at this moment, when I look over, over, overall of how the both tournaments have been going, the teams that have been eliminated in the playoff stage and then also in the round of 16, uh, it is writ literally a case of surviving and being drawn with the right in with the right team in order to survive because of the run of Basel and the run uh, for instance was kind of a little bit odd or when I look at uh, United and Leverkusen's uh, difference United had to go through all the Spanish teams uh, Leverkusen yeah Mon Monaco but the rest was relatively straightforward so you know the luck of the draw always has to play something and that's also true for the Italian teams. I will start with start in the Conference League, as, as I said already, and will start the team that I'm wearing, AZ against Anderlecht. That this needed penalties was a little bit of an odd one, because AZ uh, came out storming and within 50 minutes had the deficit from the first leg on back on level with Pavlidis scoring both. Yes, the first one was a penalty that was contentious. However, uh, the second one was really nicely played and there were chances there even before they have to make it 3-0. Uh, the game will, would have been settled right there and then that this did not happen I think has to be seen as a little bit of a letdown. Uh, there wasn't much coming from Anderlecht. Uh, yes, they had the occasional chance and I thought maybe just before the end of re regulation that Anderlecht could score and go through was not happening second uh, in the overtime it was also more or less at, at that and then it goes to penalties and um the referee chose the goal there were both sets of fans were there which which, which think was quite kind of nice uh, that all the penalties are converted Vertonghen has the first one saved by Matt Ryan Australian team goalie uh, and also the last one by Sardea that was also uh, saved and so had it relatively easy moving on in the, in that sense 
it shouldn't have taken all, all, all over time. Now, from my personal point, point, point of view, who was I supporting? I think going into it, I would have gone at that all, all the way just because I got that uh, Anderlecht jersey that I showed you before. Um, there was a bit of me, why couldn't Anderlecht move on that I can use it? But overall, I actually think that AZ is a better team. They have eliminated Lazio. <laughs> One of the few is that it's the only team that have eliminated an, an uh, Italian team this season. So I think there's something uh, to come. Speaking of Italian teams, Fiorentina against Lech Poznan. Uh, Fiorentina's lineup definitely said, we will be cruising. We are not giving up a three goal lead. Well, Susa pulls one back after nine minutes out of nowhere. But then Fiorentina actually found, settled into the game quite, quite nicely. Should have had a penalty. I mean, the way uh, Gonzalez is being elbowed in the box and then even stepped over, although that is not a penalty, penalty, a penalty foul with blood and it's on how the referee and the VAR do not look at this, especially the clear elbow. Um, that was a little bit beyond me. The next part, of course, is also that Lech Poznan put a let's put it said put a lot of physicality into this game to get to Fiorentina, and then they get a penalty that I don't know what the referee saw. And this is so. I mean, the the foul on Gonzalez that was a clear penalty. What was given there? It did not look like a penalty call to me. I was given the penalty. 65th minute. It's tunnel Lech Poznan, and suddenly. The game is rather nervy, and Sobiech just four minutes later makes it 3 0 at that moment. I'm saying, is Fiorentina really gonna get eliminated? Okay, Italiano is reacting, puts on Cabral for Jovic, puts on Castrovilli for Bonaventura, and then things are going so deal scores a uh, goal to pull to pull one back so uh, kind of settling nerves and then in stoppage time uh, Gonzalez is, uh, is setting up Castrovilli it's a 3-2 win for Fiorentina who move on but there was a scare a little bit like uh, with Braga where they also had a pretty big win uh, in the first leg away from home and then found themselves to I think they won 4-0 away from home and then 2-0 um, at home down but they also found the goals this one was a rather close one as well, and you gotta see. A close one uh, was also Nice against Basel from the first leg, but this was so similar uh, to, to the first leg, where Nice is clearly the better team. They create chances, they cannot convert uh, chances. Uh, it was a really nice go go goal, nice beer builder play uh, through Laborde, it took a wicked deflection that uh, could, could go in, but Nice especially in the second half, created many chances, should have settled the game there. And then Calafiore puts it up to Augustine in the 86th minute, and it's a 1-1, out of nowhere for Basel. But it got, got worse because then, up until the end of uh, regulation, Basel hit the vault work, I had quite a few chances to actually uh, win the game in re reg regulation. But it goes to overtimes, where again, uh, with one of the few counters, again, needs a little bit more, uh, but with the f one of the few counters, Adams heads it in. It was a really weird header because more like a glancing header from far out that just finds the way in. Nice only can hit, hit, hit the crossbar once more and Basel with an upset. And don't tell me that I didn't tell you last week. I said, watch out this Basel team. They have something about them. They are never say die team. So uh, it will be very, very interesting. It was also a teeny bit nervy, I guess, also for West Ham, uh, for the simple reason that Ghent uh, took an early lead uh, in that, 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 that game uh, through Kuypers, who had already scored uh, the goal in Belgium. Um, really interesting goal, 2 to us, but that kind of got West Ham going. And uh, Michael Antonio had already scored, uh, scores the equalizer in the 37th, so it was only 11 minutes that uh, Ghent could dream of the sensation. Again, it was not an evening for Belgian teams, although with three Belgian teams in, 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 in there. And then uh, they hit already the crossbar, then there's another one where they hit uh, the up, the, the, the upright, but the build up, there's a clear handball. Lucas Paqueta takes the penalty. I'm not sure if he was the designated pen penalty taker, but he's he says up. It's 2-1. And then just two, two minutes later, Rice takes the ball in midfield and runs. I mean, it's almost a straight line, then pass two, two defense, pull, pull, pulls it in. 
And just a few minutes later, Michael and, uh, Antonio makes it 4 1. A goal by Jared Bowen uh, in the 7 7 first got then ru ruled out. But in that sense, West Ham cruising to the next round. And in this next round, we have another following semi finals. We have Fiorentina against Basel and West Ham against AZ. I think in both games, as we will see, they are clear favorites. Uh, I think AZ is definitely a stronger team than Basel. So um, it will be interesting. What's interesting also that the two favorites have a home game first. So don't underestimate that part. But I would say West Ham, despite the troubles in the Premier League, should be a better team than AZ. Although AZ is a really good team uh, this, this season. Fiorentina has to be favored over Basel, but they have to take it seriously. Um, but you know, Fiorentina against West Ham, that's it's a very, very cool final, uh, potential final. But I'm not excluding any uh, upsets there. As for the favorites, you see that Fiorentina are huge favorites of Basel. 75 to 25% moving on versus West Ham. Uh, that also, I mean, 60, 40, that's pretty uh, one sided already, but 75 to 25, it's the biggest difference there, that we have Fiorentina others are, according to the ratings, the strongest team remaining in that competition and have now a 43% chance of winning it all. This would be a first European trophy for Free Fiorentina, I think, since the 60s or something like, like, like that. West Ham, also, since the 60s, have, have not won a European trophy. So, um, gonna be in, in, interesting. I'd say Basel, of course, have never won a European trophy. Well, over in the Europa League, uh, we have the game that finished last first on the rundown. Uh, Roma against Feyenoord. That, I want to say, was probably, probably the most tense of all the games because the two teams match up quite interestingly with Feyenoord putting a lot uh, of hard work in there. Maybe a little bit, how to say, agricultural, a little bit more on the back. Although I don't mean this as a, a demeaning thing. Uh, way to say with, with with some crafty players up front, whereas your know, Roma have a lot of talent on the side. I think uh, Tata, this, this Roma team is quite quite good, but um, also a lot of experience. It was already a back and forth battle in Rotterdam. This time, the first half, I wanna say, was Feyenoord could keep it rather level for most of the time. And welcome to the weird world of my soccer universe you know that Roma after Milan is my favorite team in Italy but I have a real liking for Feyenoord and this is not in small part to Gernot Trauner the former last captain playing there who let's face it uh, whenever he comes up against players of a high high quality he is he's out of his depth Let's face it, and it was that case in this game as well. So, because of him, and because I actually really like what Feyenoord were doing this season, I actually uh, was at initially saying, yeah, Feyenoord, it was pretty nice to get a, maybe quite get one over Roma for the Lost Conference League final. Uh, so initially I was for Feyenoord, but the longer the game went on, and then I was thinking, Roma is in a top four race with Milan, and we have not mentioned it yet. We talk you will last, but you will get points back. So uh, that's becoming a real uh, challenge now. Milan in the semi final. Roma better get in the semi final as well. And as much as I want Milan and Roma going in, I think only one of those two will make it into the Champions League. And let's face it. If it comes down to it, I'm going Milan, and it's better if Roma still has stuff to play for. So, my allegiances switched somewhere midway through the first half to uh, Roma, at a point where Roma actually really threw everything already at Feyenoord. Um, they took the lead through Spinazzola, where Feyenoord could not clear. I mean, uh, Roma came out from the uh, half, half to half the break, trying to eat Feyenoord alive. Spinazzola scored, they created uh, tons more chances, however, then uh, Shimanski Cross is headed in by Iga Peshaw in the 80th minute, and at that point, Feyenoord, who were under serious uh, trouble, actually would go on again and um, seemingly were all held, were, were really much on the way to really shut out Roma. However, Roma can bring on a Tammy Abraham, they can bring on a Paolo Dybala, and it is Dybala who gets the ball uh, from Pepe Pellegrini, makes a brilliant turn around Trauna puts it into the net in the 89th minute and you could see how Feyenoord players were deflated from that goal. That 
more or less killed the tie or, or, or already this piece of brilliance from Dybala uh, and in a way I also have to be now taking all the emotions all the calculations out, out of it Roma were the better team are the better team of the two uh, but Feyenoord with the hard work can make up for some technical uh, limitations that they may have in the squad when I went to overtime there only ever was one winner Tam Abraham hit the crossbar. El Sharavi, uh, after a nice Abraham assist, was a really nice move where all the Feyenoord defenders were a little bit late. One her first minutes is 3 1 Roma. I did not expect Feyenoord to come back, and they didn't. Pelle Pellegrini in the 109th uh, scores one, then even Feyenoord players sent off. Um, also, a Roma, uh, a guy from the Roma assistant stuff, was sent off for quite a nasty uh, push. On Feyenoord. But yeah, overall on balance, Roma I think deserved going through. It was much tighter than it was probably expected, but I think the class overall shone through. Um, <laughs> glad I didn't buy your Union Saint Julius jersey. Um, I wouldn't have minded them beating Le Le Leverkusen, but I always thought that Le 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 Leverkusen are too good of a team and uh, it f played right in the hands that uh, within 65 seconds they had it 1 0 through Musa Diaby. Because now, Union Saint-Julas had the owners of making the game and this is where they are not good and so uh, Losek, um plays it to Baka in the 37th and it's 2-0 and that settled the tie. Frimpong in the 60th makes it 3-0 at that moment thought, oh this could get ugly for Union saint -Julas. however Terho gets one back and then they even hit the crossbar uh, had some chances that game could have turned if one of those shots go goes in but Losek then in 79th settles it 4-1 Leverkusen are through to the semi-finals, a stage they also have not been for a long time. We have to go to the big one. Uh, <laughs> Sevilla against Man and Manager Center. After an absolutely mad first leg, where United controlled everything, the only thing they didn't do is score a third one uh, and then gave up two freak on goals. You thought that United, despite not having Bruno Bruno Financial, might actually be overall the better team. However, let's face it. Sevilla in the Europa League is its own an animal. It doesn't follow logic very, very much. And the crowd were fully behind them. They were there to hurt United if need be. And I think the hair definitely took a little bit of the pressure uh, from, from there. Because eighth minute. The Maguire plays the ball back to the hair and then Maguire says, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. However, three Sevilla players realize that them, the, the, the themselves, especially Eric Lamela, who immediately gets the ball of Maguire to an Eniziri who puts it in the net. The hair cannot play this ball, he has to play it outside. You see, Maguire gets, gets the ball in a sense, 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 and call with uh, players around him. He need, the ball needs to go on the side not to Maguire. That makes it 1-0 and it did not get better. It really didn't get better. United were a shamble. They were a shadow of themselves. Ocampos actually thought he had made him into the 41st, but Acuna was a tad offset by the right after half. Rakitic corner, but they had a, a takes a little weird um, trajectory in, in internet. 2-0 Sevilla. At that moment, everyone knew they're not coming back. And then in, in the series, the hair play, play plays it out. Does uh, is short. It goes to an 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 series who just can put it in more or less in the empty net. Again, United two goals they scored themselves. It was down to the hair. Um, Sevilla just had to do their chances and interrupt uh, the play of United. And United, who were considered one of the favorites to win this competition, are um, now out. Outer also the surprise from the last round, Sporting, um, and I'm not sure how how deserved it that overall is because in Turin they should never have lost. They created so many chances to take a good lead over Juventus, uh, and they end up losing one nil. And uh, it did not start well for them. Juve, of course, blew it by getting the 15 points back. Although, as I said, there will be a little bit more in my Serie A rivo. I don't think it's quite done yet. But I would imagine that Juve uh, will get either a smaller punt punishment, if at all, because of timing and, 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 and so on. But, you know, I'm just uh, repeating what I hear and what I could get up. Um, so Rabio, 
after uh, get, give give some the early lead. However, Sporting can come out. They know they need two. Ravio fouls Sporting player in in the box rather clear clumsily. Michael Edwards steps up. It's uh, one one. Then you were having a bit more of of the game. However, the big chance was for Sporting there, who just missed a little bit wide. And then in sex, I said, it was all you were just hanging back, trying to defend it all off. Uh, which largely the did, however, Sporting had two pretty big chances. The best one fell, uh, fell of course, to Cortes, who in the 87th minute gets the ball in a very good position. He just has to connect, but I think he has even the time to compose himself to pull it into the empty net. That didn't happen. And at that point, it was clear that you are going through. And so we are looking also here at a, a rather interesting semi-final uh, with two Italian teams having a home fig fixtures. And of the four uh, semi-finals, we have in the first leg three Italian teams at home and three Italian teams away. Roma have to play Leverkusen. Uh, don't underestimate that, uh, that, that one. Uh, Roma might be... The, the big uh, city team, however, Leverkusen have been really, really, really good on the Sharp alone. So I wouldn't be surprised if Leverkusen asked Roma. And Juve Sevilla is kind of the fixture that we have to look at because Juve on paper is probably stodgy enough and definitely better uh, suited to probably hurt Sevilla than it was United. Uh, I don't think they will make those mistakes that United will be making. However, it's Sevilla in the Europa League. This is like Real Madrid in the champ in the Champions League, so uh, don't take anything for granted there. Honestly, um, if I go by my model, the two Italian teams will play in the final. They are slight favorites. However, I would give Sevilla the boost that this is level uh, between Sevilla and Juve. I can very well see Sevilla making it to the final and winning another Europa League. It is so crazy with this team, but you see the chances here Juve and Roma. Uh, Roma slight favorites over Leverkusen. As I said, um, while on paper the two Italian teams might be favorite, I can see uh, the other final very much as well. So yeah, that was it from me from these two competitions. It was a highly entertaining evening, yeah, yes, yesterday, with loads of drama. Yes, a few matches like Sevilla and Lever Leverkusen went uh, out, out of hand or West Ham, but uh, we had three overtimes. We had a penalty shoot, 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 shoot. We had many close calls. It was in, in interesting. And these two competitions were dishing up more action than the Champions League has been this year. And that, I think, is a good thing. If you watch this because you are very much rewarded and I hope this will continue. I want to close that I probably will do the review video for the first leg of the seven finals rather late because I will not be uh, in uh, yeah, at home on that week on that um, uh, Thursday and then uh, Friday so this might come on a Sunday morning a little bit late but hey I will do it. In any case give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video Please drop a line what you thought about the games and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.